Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel, All Things Taylor, just in time for a brand new Friday video. Before we get started, please go ahead and help us out in the algorithm a little bit by hitting the thumbs up button and don't forget to comment below after this video on your thoughts on today's information. All right, so a lot of us today have always heard the phrase growing up, those who do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. However, for a society that has heard that with such redundancy, we seem to be doomed to repeat our history. We have heard such words thrown around with such impunity that they start to lose their meaning. Such words like women's rights, education, empowerment. What do those actually mean anymore and what should they represent versus what we force them to be represented as today. So this is actually where the inspiration for the show comes from, because I firmly believe untold history unfolds today, and your potential is only limited by your understanding of history and where we can go from there. I am your host, Taylor Hendricks, and this is Fun Fact Friday. Now, for those of you tuning in for the first time, you may not know that we have already traveled the globe for Fun Fact Friday. We have gone all the way as far back as 1850s Paris, France. We have gone into the unintentional discovery of the modern day microwave in post-World War II America. We have stopped in the 1970s with the <laughs> rocky star of Sylvester Stallone, pun intended. We've even gone into the 1980s with the Pan Am flight, as well as the Baltic Way with lots Latvia, Lithuania, and Estonia. We've even gone into the early 1990s. Now, we're not going to go quite as far ahead to the 1990s and not quite as far back as the 1850s. Where we're actually going to begin more specifically is March 25th, 1878. And that is where we see the birth of a Chicago, an infamous, I might add, Chicago socialite and heiress by the name of Frances Glesner Lee. Fl Frances Glesner Lee was anything but your typical dame of that society. She grew up in a very different era whose social landscape looks completely different from what we know and take advantage of today. Back then, women weren't allowed to pursue education or go to college and have mainstream careers. Um, and if you were a socialite, you might have had more opportunities, but there was also more pressures of societal norms for such a person as Frances Glesner Lee. Frances Glesner Lee, however, did enjoy some of the privileges that did come with being an heiress of her day. She got to enjoy a very extensive home education alongside her brother who went on to Harvard. And early on in her childhood, she actually suffered a traumatic medical event where she came down with severe tonsillitis, which was a very, very dangerous thing in 1870s and 1880s Chicago, more specifically in the world at that point. The medical system of the, the early 1900s was vastly different than what we know and take advantage of today. Um, this situation was actually something that could have killed Frances Glesner Lee before she even really got started in life. Luckily, the uh, her family actually had the, the sense of mind and self to seek out a second opinion, which ultimately ended up saving Glesner Lee's life with a successful surgery, which could have ended drastically differently had she gone with the first option, which proposed a very dangerous treatment for the young child. After that experience, she became fascinated by the medical world, and any time she could study it, get her hands on it, or first-hand experience, she did, including um, going on house calls with local doctors in the White Mountains and reading every single book ever written that she could get her hands on on the topics of medicine, which ultimately led her in her adult life to befriend her brother's friend from Harvard, a George McGrath. George McGrath would ultimately change the trajectory of Frances Glesner Lee's life to what we now refer to her today. So let's dive right on into that. By the time the 1930s came along, Frances Glesner Lee was already established as not your typical socialite. Uh, the type of parties she threw were not your typical social gatherings. They were more like discussions of death. <laughs> for lack of better terms. Her parties would include polite discourse and exchanging of ideas among members of the medical community and crime scene with police officers, medical examiners, coroners, and more. Back then, coroners were more so used with police as opposed to actual medical examiners, which would actually turn around and become reverse with the help of Frances Glesner Lee and her friend George McGrath. Uh, by 1931 to 1936, Frances Glesner Lee would be so engrossed in the medical community and in crime scene analysis that she would endow the Harvard Department of Legal Medicine, um, which was the first department of its kind ever 
in the history of the United States. She also endowed the Harvard Associates of Police Science, which became a national organization for the furtherance of forensic science. She held parties to help engage people in this realm that would ultimately help keep uh, the right people uh, in society safe and the people that belong behind bars for their crimes behind bars, which up until that point was actually a very dicey job because of the lack of training for crime scenes. A lot of times evidence was lost and unless, you know, people were caught, you know, red handed, so to speak, a lot of times a lot of murderers uh, went without being caught and a lot of those murders went unsolved. And this was something that did not sit right with George McGrath, who became a leading expert in pathology at Harvard and the Chicago heiress herself, Frances Glesner Lee. Um, all of these parties, all of this information, all of this studying and research from them both led to her invention called the Nutshell Studies of Unexplained Death. So hence the parties of death. Here we go. She created what was an amazing example of crime scene analysis. She created over 20 dioramas of death at scale, anywhere from one inch to over a foot, um, of actual crime scenes for different um, police officers, crime scene investigators, and students, both present and future, to study from. Each diorama that she made of death actually took anywhere from three to four thousand dollars of her own money, and each student was allowed 90 minutes to study each one and come up with the cause of death. These were beautiful, to scale, fully furnished, picture-esque uh, examples of domesticity of her day. And what's so amazing is it was only marred by the presence of a dead body. And her scales were so detailed. They had working lights, actual working mousetraps. They even had, she even had proper discoloration on her bodies and bloating in certain cases with certain deaths that were pictured in her dioramas. Her attention to detail was top notch and outdone by none. Um, it, it's just absolutely amazing. Her dioramas, her 20 dioramas of death actually helped develop, practice, study, and teach crime scene analysis. They were so specific in their methods that they helped with geometric search patterns, zonings, trace evidence, and complete and competent, I might add, crime scene analysis. These were so well done that throughout the 1940s, they were actually being used as major teaching tools at seminars, including some seminars taught by herself truly, Frances Glesner Lee. These were so accurate, in fact, that 18 out of the 20 dioramas that she made throughout her life were actually used in Harvard at the Harvard Associates of Police, and they were still using those up to 1999. And some of those, in fact, were actually donated after 1945 by her uh, for the Department of Legal Medicine for use in teaching seminars. Uh, like I said, some of which she taught herself. And uh, quite a few of them are actually still on display today in the Maryland Chief uh, Medical Examiner's Office. And they're, they're still using them as teaching tools to this day in 2023. That is amazing. It is so cool. Uh, the medical examiner's office in Maryland uh, with association with Harvard still uses those. And they were act some of them were actually on loan to the Smithsonian from 2017 to 2018. And her nutshell studies of unexplained death were actually referenced in season 17, episode 17 of NCIS. Um, she is widely regarded for her contributions uh, to modern medical science and modern forensics that she was actually made an honorary captain of the New Hampshire State Police in October 27 of 1943. That means she was the first ever woman to join the International Associations of Chief of Police. And that is why the infamous unconventional socialite of her day Frances Glesner Lee is often regarded as the mother of forensics, proving that those that do not know their history are doomed to repeat it. And you are only limited by your understanding of the world around you and your own limiting beliefs. You can do almost anything you set your mind to in today's society. The one of the most wealthiest, most opportunistic societies we have ever lived in throughout history. Just look at what Frances Glesner Lee was able to accomplish in a day, in a time where a lot of opportunities that are presented to us today did not exist for someone like her, even with her had advanced standing in society. Did that stop her? No. 
And if you think about the countless lives that she saved, the countless people that she rightfully helped put behind bars, and the advancements in modern science that we use today in, in shows that you see like forensics, forensic files, crime scene investigations, modern shows like NCIS, you are only limited by your own limiting beliefs. The life you're living today was created by decisions you made just a few short years ago. And the decisions you make today and right now ultimately are going to shape what your future looks like just a few short years from now. You are only limited by your own limiting beliefs and the habits you choose to create than that ultimately create you. Look what Francis Glessner Lee was able to accomplish. So ask yourself, if she could do that then, what can you do now, today? This is where untold history unfolds today, right in front of our very eyes. I am your host, Taylor Hendricks, and this has been the latest Fun Fact Friday. Talk soon.